For over 12 years, DeepMeta software has been an invaluable tool for iStock photo contributors to manage their portfolio and upload their work. We're now pleased to announce that DeepMeta is fully compatible for Getty Images contributors. In this short video, we'll give you an overview of what DeepMeta software can do for you, the Getty Images contributor. My name is Frankie de Meijer. Let's have a look. DeepMeta is software that runs locally on your desktop computer or laptop. It's compatible with both Windows and macOS. To download it, go to the deepmeta.com website. And on the download section, select the download for your operating system, Windows or Mac. Install it locally on your system. DeepMeta is an offline portfolio manager, which means that it keeps its own data in a local database. When you start a synchronization, it will contact both the ESP server of Getty Images and the customer facing gettyimages.com web server. It will sync all information for your portfolio locally. This consists of your submission batches and your image and video metadata info, reviews and rejections for your recent uploads, thumbnails for your entire portfolio. And if you like, you can also have the meta download your monthly royalty statements. This will now allow you to view your statistics in the meta. Once the sync is finished, you can work with your data locally offline. You can view your statistics. You can add new images and videos. Prepare the metadata for upload, set a title description, keywords, add model and property releases. And you can do this for as many files as you like. And this works very efficiently and locally on your system. Once you're ready, you can have Deep Meta upload all prepared work in one go and have a cup of tea or coffee. After installation, the first time you run Deep Meta, it will open the preferences section and ask you for a few details. Now, the first thing you need to enter is your ESP credentials. Those are the credentials that you're using to log into the ESP site. You can click the verify button to check. Now, the two other credentials are optional. We won't discuss them at this stage. It's a good uh, moment to set a few other options here. The language, you can select the keyword language, language for uh, entering your keywords. Those are the exact same options that you get at the ESP website. And you can also set DeepMeta to use a different UI language uh, than English. It's also a good idea to set the upload region to an area that's closest to your location. As for advanced options, we will only have a look at the secondary password. Now, what this means is at the ESP site, as you might know, under account management, security, you can choose to have a secondary password. If you have set this, then it's possible in, in Deep Meta to also specify this password. We'll click OK to confirm. At the bottom, you can see that DeepMeta logs in. And as it's logged in, now you can see the username. You can, at any time, you can go back to the Preferences panel by means of the main menu Preferences, or you can just simply click the link here at the bottom. Let's now have a look at the different sections of the software. 
Now, since this is the first time we run the meta on this system, we can see that most sections are completely empty at this stage. So we'll go straight to the sync, the synchronization section. And we will ask the meta to fetch the portfolio from the Getty Images server, as well as our royalty statements. Doing so will allow us to view the statistics within the meta. We'll start the synchronization. This will take some time since it's the first time. We can see that um, submission batches are being fetched, royalty statements are being fetched. This is going to take some time, so we will let the process finish and we'll get back right after. Once synchronization is finished, the right hand panel gives us an overview of the latest accepted files or rejections that we have for our recent uploads. Since we have synchronized information between DeepMeta and the Getty Images service, if we now go to the batch section, the uh, submission batch section, we can see that it's populated. So the main view gives us a list of all the different batches that we have at the ESP site. The right hand shows you more details of the selected item. You can also right click or if you're on a Mac, control click one particular item, which will open a pop up for additional options. For instance, here we can select to view this submission batch on the ESP site. This will open your browser and show you the ESP page for that particular batch, if it's still available, of course, as you know, um, batches are being cleaned up after a year or a year and a half on the ESP site, but they will remain in Deep Meta once they have been synchronized, so they, they are not deleted from Deep Meta. Let's now have a look at the top bar and see the meaning of the different icons. At the left hand side, we have the Add Files button. You can just hover your mouse over a button to see an explanation of what it does. Add files means adding files, uh, adding uh, images or um, movies for upload. Add model releases, adding property releases, creating new submission batches. And next to this button, we have the drop down to select one particular batch. In this case, um, we have this batch selected. Now, if we double click it, we will see that DeepMeta moves to the files section and it shows the files that are present in this batch. In the top drop down for the batch, we can also select to show all batches. And this means that all files that are present in our portfolio will be shown. So you get an overview of all files, regardless of the batch that they are. There's a column which shows the batch that the file is in. At the right hand side, we have a search input box. So for instance, we can type Brussels to select all files that have Brussels as a keyword uh, in a title. And there's a number of additional fields that are being searched like the, um, the collection, for instance. Here again, selecting one particular file, which will give us at the right hand side, the preview. Throughout the software, we can customize um, a lot of the positions and sizes of panels. So for instance, here, if we want this preview to be larger, uh, we can use this slider to make the text and the thumbnails larger or smaller. Um, the left hand side as well, we can make the menu bar to be smaller and larger. We can set the uh, list height to be larger and smaller. We can resize the columns. Another thing we can do is we can customize the items that are being shown in the list. So for instance, if we want to add an additional column here, we can right click on the header of a column and then choose insert move column. And you can see there's a huge selection of different columns that you can add. You can remove columns 
uh, you can move them to a different place, etc. So wherever you have a list in Deep Meta, those are the capabilities that you have. As we mentioned earlier, the sync, the synchronization phase, will fetch your entire portfolio and store it locally in Deep Meta. So let's now have a look in detail at the information that's stored. If we go to the statements section, we see each individual royalty statement that's been downloaded into Deep Meta. As usual, you can customize the columns that appear and uh, almost every single column that's available in the royalty statements can also be added here for your convenience. Whenever we click a royalty statements, uh, statement at the right hand side, we see the details. Or let's say that the new royalty statement for November 2018 has just arrived. What we can do is we can click the graph view for that royalty statement. And we can see in detail what files have, what's the top 20, 25 or top 50 or whatever of the files that have been uh, sold. Uh, over that month, we can sort it by royalty, by download or by um, royalty per download. Uh, we can fully customize, we can add additional uh, charts, we can set uh, what type of information these charts are showing. Uh, there's a whole video, a, s a whole separate video on how to work with the uh, charts in Deep Meta, so I advise you to have a look at it. Uh, you can even, for instance, have the world map. And then, for instance, uh, you can also select multiple um, royalty statements and see how those affect results over time. Or you can just scroll through them, etc. To get even more details, we can look at the sales section. And this sales section shows one line for every single sale that was made. So all the sales extracted from the royalty statements are shown separately in here. Um, we can, for instance, we can use the, the search box to just select, for instance, all the sales that were part of the royalty statement for uh, November 2018. Um, we can do other searches. For instance, we can type the word book. And what this will do is it will filter any sale that has the word book in one of its fields. For instance, in this case, we see that the usage was for a textbook. Uh, for another one, we see that uh, it was for a uh, textbook interior and cover, etc. Uh, we can also uh, here, for instance, uh, what we could do is uh, we can select all these items that are related to books and then, for instance, view some uh, statistics in this regard. So Deep Meta Statistics are kind of a general tool like a Swiss knife that you can use any way you like to extract information on how your portfolio is doing, how it's doing over time and try to possibly extract some information maybe for planning future shoots. If we go to the statistics section, there's um, uploads and sales. That's important for Getty Images contributors. The uploads part is showing you how active you've been uploading over time. As you can see here, I've been active over the years 2005, 2009, and then it was all the way downhill, probably because working on Deep Meta took quite a bit of time, but it was spent with pleasure. The status, you get an overview of the status um, of your files. Um, in this case, we have 1,363 active files, but we have six files that are yet to be edited, which means we've added these files. They are yet to be uploaded and we need to do some editing on them. This box is very interesting. It's your Getty, uh, Getty Images collection and it shows how many files are in which collection. 
Now, as you might know, it's currently no longer possible to get an, a view, an entire view of your portfolio. For instance, if you have images in the Moments RM section, which are uh, editorials only, then those can not be seen by yourself uh, on the Getty Images website because they're only available to a certain type of buyers. But DeepMeta will extract all the information for you, so it will show you your entire portfolio. So, for instance, which are these 309 portfo uh, files uh, in my portfolio for Moment RM? Well, I can go to the Files section and in Search Files, I type Moment RM. I do this between quotes because I want to have not just a separate word moment or RM, but I want to have the phrase moment RM to be searched for. And then you can see that these are the files that are in the moment RM uh, collection. If I select them all at the right hand side, I can see 309 items indeed are part of this selection, are part of this collection. And then at the right hand side, again, I can view details. I can see which particular sales were there. I can see the total amount uh, in dollars, the downloads, RPD value, etc. I can see the same information as a chart. I can customize this chart. And customizing uh, customization uh, is also stored throughout the meta, which means that if you change your columns, if you change one particular item, the meta will Keep these settings for your future se uh, sessions. Another view you can have on your portfolio is by keyword. If you go to the keyword section, then you can see um, all the keywords that have been used throughout your portfolio. You can, for instance, you can sort on, uh, for instance, um, dollars, which means which Keywords were present in my most uh, selling uh, images and possibly um, you could have uh, some sort of uh, evaluation and try to decide maybe for future shoots um, what might be a good direction for your portfolio. Again, here you can select multiple items or not. Um, you can view statistics uh, for all the files that have this keyword. You can have it as charts, etc. Now, one last thing regarding statistics. When we performed the synchronization, there was also an option to fetch boards from GettyImages.com. As a reminder, what's a board or a light box, as it used to be called in the early days? Going to the Getty Images website, not just you, but also the customer can create as many boards as they like. Uh, what's a board? A board is merely a collection of a number of uh, images or videos that are grouped together around a certain criterion. Um, now, in this case, a number of boards have been fetched and these are now available locally. What's interesting about these boards is not just the fact that you can check what images are inside of them, but if we go to page two to view a second set of columns for the boards, in this case, these, these have been preset to uh, sales information, then we can have a look. We can sort, for instance, by royalty amount, and we can see which subjects, which boards have um, brought us most uh, revenue up to this moment. At the right hand side, we can also, for instance, if we select a board, let's say European flags, then we can select at the right hand side to view um, which sales have been made for um, images that are part of this board. And we can see the total royalty downloads, uh, etc. We can also see the chart. Again, fully customizable. And perhaps we can use this information to decide whether this is something we still want to shoot or whether it's something that might be declining. As we can see here, um, interest has still been relatively high over the past months, so it might be worthwhile to go out and shoot some more European flags. Here on the world map, we see that there's particular interest in uh, Germany and the United States 
for these types of um, images, which might also affect your future shoot or not. As for this one part that we haven't uh, discussed yet in statistics, which is sales statistics as a whole. But as I mentioned before, this is something, uh, so these are the global sales uh, statistics, and this is something that we have an entire video dedicated to. So I invite you to go out and uh, check it out. So far, we've seen a number of different ways you can use DeepMeta to evaluate your current portfolio. However, as you can see at the right hand side, DeepMeta now has full uploading support for Getty Images contributors. We'll give you a quick demo of how this works. We create a new batch by clicking the top center Create Batch icon. Select the type and DeepMeta will warn you if you have no upload rights for a particular batch. In this case, we'll just use Creative Image. Give the batch a name. You can add an additional note for the reviewer or a brief code if you effectively have a brief code that applies to the batch. Click OK and the batch is created. If we double click this batch, we see that the meta now moves to the files section, which is now empty for this batch. And we see at the top drop down that Beach 2018 is now the active batch. If we now add files, We'll add all of them. They will go to this active batch. During import, the meta will try to extract IPTC metadata from the JPEG files. As you can see, in this case, it was able to extract the title, young girl at the beach, and a number of keywords. If we move to the next file, we see that there's an error triangle. And this is because only four valid keywords have been found and we need at least five to be able to upload. Now, to change the data of a file, of an image, there's a number of different ways. Now, the easiest is to just click the pencil icon at the top of the preview. This will put the preview panel in the edit mode. Because there's a lot of different fields to enter, They've been spread out across three different tabs. There's the General tab, Keywords tab, and Releases tab. As for the General tab, if, for instance, we don't enter a title, you will see a triangle which indicates the error. And if you hover over the triangle, you see what the error is. Uh, so a title is obliged. We'll re-edit. We can add an optional description, etc. We can add an alternate ID. Most of these fields are exactly the same as on the ESP website. As for keywords, we see there are only four valid keywords. So we need to enter a few additional ones. You can enter keywords by separating them with a comma. Or you can just enter key, keyword by keyword and enter, uh, press the enter key each time. It doesn't matter. We'll just add two, press enter. And we see that the word play is ambiguous because there's different meanings possible. It could just mean plain, which is the case here, but it could also mean that it's a theatrical performance. So this is the traditional disambiguation, the clarification process. Uh, you just click the term that applies. In this case, it is playing. I can just press playing, and which means that it moves to the valid keywords side. And then I could also click additional um, meanings if they apply. However, you can also, as is mentioned uh, in the Hoover, you can also control click, which means that you know that there's only one meaning and you want the box to disappear. I'll just click the minus button here to make the box disappear. For outdoors, there's just one meaning, so we select it. You can see that there's no OK button or a cancel button anywhere. This is because all these actions have immediate effect. This could be potentially dangerous because 
DeepMeta also allows you to edit multiple files at the same time. But there's an undo redo feature, which means you can see here at the bottom of the DeepMeta window that uh, we can undo. So we can have an unlimited amount of levels of undo. So if I click it now, we see that we just go back to the original situation. And I'll take the opportunity to use control click in this case to just select this single meaning and then have the box automatically disappear at the same time. That's it for keywords. For releases, um, you can see that there's a number of releases shown already. And this is because DeepMeta keeps a local database of your releases. So if we go to the left hand side, and this is a section we haven't looked at yet, releases, you can see the uh, database, the local database of the releases that you have stored in DeepMeta. This is because sometimes it can be necessary to reuse a certain release. For instance, if you have a um, shoot where you have video as well as images, you will have to create two separate batches for this. But then thanks to DeepMeta keeping track of your releases, you can just reuse the re release you already entered. We go back to files, releases. Let's say that we're not going to use any of the existing releases. Um, so I have the show all button off here. We can see that there's no release assigned to this file. I can just add a new model release. There you go. Now you can see that there's an error triangle for that one. If I double click, you can see the reason why. Since it's a model release, we are obliged to assign a birth date. And now this is a valid model release. And we can tick this checkbox in order to couple it to this particular file. We could use another additional release here from the series, for instance, this one. We could add it as well. Or we could search for a particular release by typing something in the search box. Since this is an image with just one person, I'm just going to assign one single release. Now we have edited one single file. One thing we could do is, let's say that most of the other files have exactly the same data assigned. What we can do is we can, <clears throat> sorry, we can right click and then copy and then select a number of other files right click or control click if you're on a Mac and paste. So DeepMeta has a intelligent copy paste feature where you can select which types of metadata you want to copy. If I click OK, you can see that this data has been copied to these different files. Another thing you can do is you can select, uh, let's just say these are all from the same shoot. So we could select all of these files. And then we can use batch editing to assign certain properties to the files at one go. For instance, in this case, I could have copyright added. I could have a common keyword, for instance, or I could say these files are all in summer. While I see that the keyword summer has only been assigned to five of these files, I can just click it to assign it to all 23 of these files. Again, I can use undo if I made a mistake to go back to the original situation. Same for releases. Uh, we can see here that this release was assigned to only part of the files. I could have, for instance, a property release here, which I could assign to all of the files in one go. Putting the right hand side preview panel in the edit mode is one of the different ways to edit your files. However, there's a different way to do this. If you happen to have, for instance, a dual monitor setup, you can use double click and this will open a separate file, uh, sorry, a separate window that you can make as big or as small as possible. 
And this will show the three different tabs all at the same time. This can be more comfortable for editing uh, in certain situations. Again, you can customize most of the fields by changing the size. The capabilities of this separate window are identical to what you can do in the um, right hand side preview. You also have full undo redo support and you also have support for editing multiple files at the same time. Now that we've prepared a number of files for upload, now I haven't been very thorough in keywording. I suggest you do a better job at this, but just for demo, let's just assume that these five files are ready for upload. What we can do is either we can right click to get the pop-up menu or at the right hand side, we can use the button Q. This will put these five different files in the upload queue. If we look at the status of these files, we see that these files have been queued for upload. Other files are still to be edited. This file is ready for upload because it has no more uh, errors. Let's now go to the final section that we haven't looked at uh, of the meta, which is the upload section. In this upload section, we can see two different lists. The right hand side is the upload queue. The left hand size, side are new files that haven't been uploaded yet. We can move files between these two lists by using, uh, by selecting them and using the buttons. This is a way to prepare for upload. So um, we haven't visited the uh, website yet. We haven't contacted the server yet. We've done most of this work in an offline fashion. But let's say that you've finished preparing these files for upload. Then you can just put them in the upload queue. And when you click the start upload, DeepMeta will upload all these files at one go and you don't need uh, to supervise the process. It will do this automatically. There's also a column here, releases, which shows how many releases have been assigned. Uh, so perhaps you might want to double check and see if indeed if this is something that's correct or not. If it's not correct, for instance, I see there's two different releases assigned to this file while in fact, there's only one uh, person. I can double click it to get the edit, um, the edit page. And for instance, in this case, there was a property release uh, assigned as well, but let's say this is not appropriate. So I can just unselect it, which means that there's only one release assigned. We can now start upload and DeepMeta will automatically upload all the files for you. At the bottom here, you can see the history list. And this is showing um, the progress of the procedure of the uploads. We have fast forwarded a little bit to the end of the uploads. If we now go to the files section, we can see that these files have a status to submit. The reason for this is that in preferences advanced, this option was turned off for this demo. Normally this option is turned on, submit after upload, which means that after uploading, DeepMeta will automatically submit the files for review. It's up to you to decide how you want this to work. One thing we can do at this stage is we can right click or control click on a Mac and get some additional options for this. For instance, we can view on ESP site. What this does is open your browser to the batch and you can verify the uploaded files at the ESP site. And now of course the rest of these files could be prepared as well. As you know, Getty Images does prefer, prefer you to uh, upload all files in one batch at one go, um, which, is, which makes the job for um, inspectors quite a bit easier and more efficient. Before rounding up this tutorial, there's just one little extra thing I'd like to show. We'll quickly create a video batch. Now, 
you're not obliged to choose a name if you don't choose a name and click OK it will get a generic name for this batch we will add just one video put the right hand side in edit mode and you can see that there's a slider which allows you to choose the poster frame for the video this is very important uh, it's very important to choose the most representative frame as a poster frame which is uh, very good for uh, sales of the video here again undo is uh, possible so you can go back to previous uh, locations that you had as a poster frame so that was just a little extra for video contributors that's it for this overview i hope that everything was clear and that you got interested in trying out deep meta there's a number of different videos available also i suggest you to go and check them out um, they might mention iStock photo but in fact most of the features are available for getty images users as well so don't hesitate if you see iStock photo being men uh, mentioned you can go ahead and watch the video thank you very much